Welcome to this special edition of Within Reach. It is July 2020. I'm pleased to be speaking today with uh, Dr. Paul Clewitter. Paul uh, and his wife Louise served for many decades in France. Uh, then some years ago, Paul became our Europe director and now serves as the director of our global church planting network. And I know, Paul, that uh, we've got folks that are very interested in knowing more about how our global team is dealing with the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, which has rocked our world. So thanks so much for taking time with us today. But let's begin with you. How has this uh, pandemic impacted your world? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the impact has been great. Um, yet some things have remained the same. Others have changed. Uh, Louise and I, we, we work with about 40 people in nine different countries uh, in church planting. And so we're accustomed to having meetings via Zoom, Skype, Facebook, you know, FaceTime, you know, that sort of thing. And yet we're starting also to see the limits of uh, those, uh, those tools. Mm. Uh, sometimes people are starting to get frazzled. We're, we're seeing that, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's not the social grease, you know, the interaction time, the face-to-face -face time, you know, where, for example, the, uh, the introverts uh, in Zoom meetings, everything's linear. So each one needs to take her his turn and they don't get a chance to share like they would if we were sitting down at a meal or the idea comes later on. Ah, I thought about that, but I didn't get to share it, you know, and here it comes. All that gets lost. And, you know, so for, we, we're seeing the limits of it and, you know, we're looking forward to a time when, you know, we can actually start to, to interact face to face as well. Well, Paul, you mentioned you've got uh, 40 staff members scattered among nine countries. Uh, what are some of the specific COVID-related challenges that they are facing now on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, one of the big things is that uh, the plans and strategies that were uh, made uh, pre-COVID no longer apply. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, you know, an example, I mean, this is a radical example, but number, I, I won't even show where, but there's a team... Uh, their strategy is to reach out to international students, okay? And so they do that, they provide community, they get to share Jesus that way. Well, as of September, those students will all be online. Mm. And even in that country, uh, you know, there's been a decree that any international students studying online will no longer be permitted in country. Hmm. So their entire strategy, their entire plan is no longer applicable. So they've got to rethink everything. So that, that's, a, that's a huge challenge. Uh, for, for others, we have, uh, well, I'm just thinking of two families. Uh, their, their children are at home and they need to now be homeschooled. Uh, the, the, the parents, however, are trying to uh, teach their children, coach their children, help their children in a system that they never learned uh, with a language. They're learning the language themselves. And so they're having to help their kids in a language that they don't even know. Wow. Obviously, it's great for their language learning, but extremely difficult because for them, you know, their kids future is on the line here. So, so you know, some pretty, pretty major concerns for them. Well, Paul, what do you see as some of the opportunities that this COVID crisis is creating for our global church planters? Well, I think the, the, the first thing, the most important thing is a realignment of priorities. And here, you know, prayer. Um, because we get very, very busy uh, for good reason. You know, uh, God has sent us to for where we live, where we serve, uh, where we minister uh, for the gospel. And uh, yet, I, I think in general, uh, we tend to overestimate the impact of our activity and underestimate the impact of God's activity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because we are unable to do the many, many things that we were doing before, it's allowing us to reevaluate and place greater value on prayer, just uh, trusting the spirits, you know, to to work in ways that we cannot, and actually we never could, you know, and uh, you know, to remind us that our activity is ultimately totally dependent upon God. Um, 
you know, just just today, uh, I, I read this quote, uh, Stanley Hoverbus, but uh, and and he's he's speaking from a human perspective, but he says prayer is the way we let God loose in the world. That's an amazing statement, you know. And so now we're realizing, yeah, we we need God to work because there are so many things that we cannot do. So you know, it's uh, before we get back into hyperactivity of, of ministry and mission to make sure that the prayer has maybe a bigger place, you know, in our time investments, you know, asking God to do the things that only he can do. Um, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, there, there are other opportunities as well uh, in Dublin. Okay, so the, the angles, I mean, they've continued on. They're not able to meet to face-to-face. They have a highly evangelistic ministry. And, uh, but, you know, because they're in a country where technology does exist, uh, for example, Socrates Cafe, Meetup, YouTube, there are online discussions, and, and that can actually be, uh, have a broader audience because of the anonymity. There's not the face-to-face, and so, uh, you know, there can be a, a, a higher attendance. And I know for churches in the States have seen that, you know, we've seen that here as well in France. But, you know, talking about you know, topics like, you uh, Jesus' trouble with religion, uh, art and faith, you know, these, these kinds of topics, they are dealing with, interacting with people uh, about those. In Southeast Asia, there's uh, another good example uh, during COVID. And this is a country where, you know, the, the measures were strong, they were quick. And so the country has now opened up again. But even during the lockdown, uh, they had developed a, a program. They're working with uh, handicapped children. And uh, so they created these kits and uh, for activities for families for uh, special needs children. And they, they sent them out on motorbikes and had people try them and then give them feedback on that. And so now, uh, now that lockdown has finished and we can find them this happening, they're back in touch with those families. They've started up working directly with those children. And, you know, so if, uh, they, they just went from one step to another, but never missed a stride, really. And, uh, you know, so there, there are some good opportunities that are happening. Well, I'm sure all of us are encouraged to hear that. Folks uh, who are accustomed to all the things we can't do, hearing no, no, no. Uh, but your team is realizing God is in this, and uh, and through prayer, God is opening up unique opportunities that may actually make us more effective in the future. We trust that will be the case. So let's transition then to that whole idea of prayer uh, that you've introduced. What Could you share two or three specific ways that we, as the Karis Fellowship here in North America, can, can be praying for our cross-cultural church planning teams scattered around the world? Yeah. I, I think that uh, I observe our, our teammates are, are quite good, actually, at engaging people um, and interacting with them. But, uh, you know, let's just join in with the Apostle Paul. I mean, he said to the Colossians 4, pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. So as good, I mean, no one's up to his standards, the Apostle Paul's, and yet he needed God to open those doors so you can pray that God will open the doors of people's hearts. That's something that only he can do, and that's why we need to ask him to do that. Uh, Just following on in uh, that passage, that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. And and so, uh, as I shared, for some teammates, uh, some netmates we call them, you know, they, their plans have changed. Uh, their, their situation has changed, and so they need wisdom. Okay, what do we do now? How can we engage with people? We weren't, we're not able to do it the way we had done before. We're not able to do it the way we planned. Okay, God, we need your wisdom to know how can we engage people and, uh, you know, with whom even should we engage? And then the last thing, here we're going to go right to the source, Jesus. Uh, and he said, you know, it's the spirit who convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So you can pray that people, the spirit will convict people and that they will submit their lives to Jesus, that there would be conversions to have churches. You have, as Tom Julian used to say, you know, you can't have a building without bricks. You know, you need people in order to start churches and just pray, pray. People will give their lives to Jesus. 
So those would be the three things that only God can do, and that's why we want to pray. Open doors, wisdom, and conversion. Well, thank you, Paul, for sharing your heart with us, taking time to invite us into your world and into the world of uh, the members of our church planting network. A quick reminder, Paul is saying, let's uh, plead for open doors. Let's ask God uh, to fill our teammates there with wisdom so that they know how to engage people, especially in a world where relationships are radically different because of the restrictions of, of the pandemic. And then, of course, let's be pleading with God uh, that the Spirit of God bring about conviction. We are asking God for conversions, uh, of course, that become faithful disciples and are formed into strong churches as we seek to fulfill the Great Commission among the least reached of our world. So uh, thank you for your care, for your support for our staff, and let's really focus these next few weeks on praying for the members of our church planting network.